Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Welcome back to another Friday edition live. We're going to ask, answer a few questions, maybe ask a few as well, not that you're going to be able to talk back to me. Uh, anyway, glad for uh, you came in and uh, joined with us today. And whew, it's been a long week. Both me and my editor over there are pretty tired. How many videos did we record today? Seven. So there is a chance that this is vodka and not water inside of this bottle because it's been a long day. But hey, I'm still here. You have most of my attention, and so let the questions pour in, and I will do my best to answer them. Be right with you. All right, let's start off with Jason is asking me, on my 96 Honda Foreman 400, my right front wheel cylinders are leaking brake fluid. I took the cylinders off and done a light sanding, sanding on the inside and rebuilt them, and they are still leaking fluid help. Okay, uh, how did you sand them? Because the bores inside of there have to be just about glass smooth, and if you just use regular sandpaper versus using like a honing stone or something like that, you probably grooved them up a little too much, and guess what? They're going to cut right through that rubber, and they're going to leak. So unfortunately, I think at this point, you're going to have to replace the entire cylinder itself because you're just going to fight a, a losing battle uh, from here on out because it's never going to seal up properly once you abuse of that surface a little too much. And it sounds like you kind of did. I mean, I can appreciate that you were trying to bring it back with just a seal kit, but I think in this case, it's going to be time to actually replace that cylinder. And before we go to the next question, I always tell y'all that I will start off with what I may have missed last week. So I'm a man of my word, and we're going to go back to Deontay. I'm not going to go with his last name. Deontay sent in a question that he has a Predator 500 that won't start. I have spark and fuel. It's been sitting up for a while. I've done everything. Any ideas? What should I check next? Right, I want to ask you a couple of questions then. I assume you've checked the spark by pulling out the spark plug, and, you know, grounding it on the side of the engine, starting the engine over, see if it was sparking back and forth. When you did that, was it a strong spark or just a very light flicker? That makes a big difference. And you say that you have fuel. To what point did you determine where you had fuel? All the way into the cylinder, or were you just making sure that it was present at the carburetor itself? Because if memory serves, the, the 05 actually has a 32 millimeter Makuni, I believe, and then it also is driven by a diaphragm uh, up above the, uh, the, uh, the main jet. And when you've got one that's a little bit older, like yours in 04, sometimes those diaphragms, they get to the point where they just don't, won't move at all because it's basically a vacuum that brings them up. I mean, you open the throttle body, wakes it up, and then that's what pulls the, uh, the, the jet up. So I need to know, did you open up the carburetor, especially if it's been sitting for a while, and really go through it? Because some of those passages inside and the jets are so small that you can't really see through them, but they can be stopped up and you won't be able to get any fuel to go through. So I would probably start with the carburetor first and uh, give me a couple of, give me a little bit more feedback and then I'll try to guide you in the right direction of where we can get your machine running. But I told you I would start off with yours and I did. So let's go back over to our list. Do, 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 do. All right, Jason is asking me, hey John, my Grizzly 700 runs really hot. Is this normal? Overheat light never comes on. However, when I turn it off after riding it for a while, you can uh, hear what sounds like the coolant boiling. Whew. Yeah, she is getting real warm. And I've noticed on the, the Grizzly 700s that uh, they particularly get hot back at the exhaust because the exhaust is so close to the plastic. And good grief, if you ever replace the plastic on yours, make sure you have that uh, that reflective tape or that heat reflecting tape that goes on the inside. Otherwise, it'll melt the panels right off of it. Trains nearby. Um, if you would, a couple of more questions for, that I have for you. Have you modified it with a different type intake or, or anything with a, a, a controller or uh, an exhaust system? I'd be curious to find that out. And if you've got access to a uh, heat gun, 
they want to take a couple of uh, take a couple of readings, especially if you're hearing you're hearing it boil. That almost leads me to believe that it's maybe maybe a little bit low on uh, coolant. So I, I believe you that it's running a little too hot. It may be running okay, but it is not cooling adequately if you can hear something boiling in there. And actually your coolant shouldn't really boil uh, to begin with. So another question is, did you have you ever replaced it and flushed it out? And if so, did you just do it with water? Or did you go back with the actual coolant that's supposed to go in there? Because these machines are pretty finicky about what type of coolant that you go back with. I would not recommend just picking up the green stuff that you would find at a local auto parts store. That's not really what they're looking for. Um, typically, they want that nice Yamaha cool blue looking coolant. So I say maybe it's time to do a, a, a flush on that one and then uh, refill it. The guys will correct me if I'm wrong because all the units, you know, they start to run together after a while for me. We did some work on a, on a 700 and I think that was one of the videos that we did. So if, if, uh, if I'm correct about that, if you would guys find that and show uh, Jason a link to it as far as you know, flushing out that system and refilling it. And hey, if we didn't, I think I've still got the units. So maybe that's one we need to add to our video list. All right. Mr. Salazar is asking me, hi, John, I have a 2007 YFC 450. It was cranking before, but not its. I checked to make sure the starter motor was getting power, and I hear, hear it, but it's not spinning. I took, the, uh, I took the dampener gear out, and the, motor, and the starter motor spins. OK, so you're telling me that you actually removed the, uh, the motor from the side of the engine and you can see the, the gear spin, or the Bendix, not the Bendix, but the gear spinning on the end of it. That tells me that you probably have a problem with that, um, there, there's a, a reduction gear and a one-way gear in between your actual, actual starter motor and where it's actually turning the engine over. Um, so that, you may have to open up that, si that side of the case and take a peek in there and see if you're having a problem because it sounds like something is bound up potentially uh, that's past the motor. So open it up and then let me know. All right. Elvira is asking me, I have a 2011 Polaris Sportsman HO. Having timing issues, put in a new piston, and that has 16 PSI. Wow. Um, yeah, I'd say you've got some timing issues. Uh, what manual, if any, did you to use to uh, set the timing? Because it sounds like it's way out of whack. And what all did you do other than the, the new piston? Did you do any valve work to it? Were the valves adjusted correctly? I mean, it's, it's you know, probable. Let's say if it was timed correctly and your valves were just not adjusted at all. Well, if that is the case, then they're, they're never really closing. So let's start with the simple stuff first. Go back, pull a manual on it, bring it around to top dead center, and then see what your your valve clearance is and make sure that it's set at the right place. And at that point, you need to check where your timing marks are for your cam compared to your um, crankshaft. Do those two things and get back in touch with me and uh, we'll see what we can figure out on it. Mr. Salazar is also asking me, can you explain how the dampener starter gear works? Thank you. Okay, you're talking about a one-way clutch, possibly? Well, it only lets the gear spin one direction and not the other. Um, the, the dampener part of it, I'm trying to remember which machine that that is on. That is, it's a gear that actually has some give in it as far as, um, it's not a solid metal gear, it actually has a damper inside of it. That way if the engine ever kicks back, it doesn't shear off a tooth or uh, the end of the, uh, the drive gear itself. Jason came back and said, I used a honing stone. Okay, well good, um, that, that was the correct thing to use. However, if you, and yours is an older machine, I think he said it was 96, if you had to hone it to the point you were taking out some pitting inside of the cylinder itself, it may look okay, but you probably had to remove so much material that the seals just aren't gonna seal up anymore. So I'll go back to my original answer. If you went through all of that and it's still leaking on you, it's just not gonna seal up because there's not enough 
clean material there for it to seal against. So fortunately, you just kind of have to buy new, uh, new um, cylinders. All right, Brady's asked me, hello, John, do you prefer doing a voltage drop or resistance when, uh, when doing diag? I know each make have their own way of doing it. Which do you prefer, uh, prefer whichever one over the other? If it's a really low resistance then that you're trying to measure, most meters can't do that. I mean, you get under 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ohms, and it, you can get that much. Uh, uh, you can get that much resistance in the cables themselves that you're trying to use for testing purposes. I mean, it's a, if it's a high or higher type ohm reading, you know, ten or up, yeah, it's going to be spot on. Especially if you're looking for basically a closed or an open. But if you're trying to test uh, a circuit where you've got such a low resistance, it's better to do a voltage drop because uh, ohm test when you're getting that low is it, really you're just kind of shooting in the dark because the meters just are not accurate enough to get, to give you an appreciable difference in between just shorting the leads together and then actually trying to do a measurement. And they just can't read down that far for the most part. All right, Isaac is asking me, I also have a brake question. I took apart my calipers off the brake line and they're leaking too. How many times can I reuse the crush washers or do you have to replace them every time? It's a 2020 Terex 800. Wow, having to go through a, a new uh, Terex already. I've reused them before. Um, it, it's kind of a hit and miss it, because it's determined by what's the banjo bolt or the surface that it's running into, what kind of, what kind of shape it, it's in as to whether or not they're going to seal up again. I've reused them before, but hey, let's face it, they're so cheap. Why not go ahead and... Uh, get another one when you order your parts, and they're just a few cents on the dollar, and that way you know you're starting out with a clean sheet of paper, so to speak. But yeah, I've reused them before too, but sometimes it's uh, hit and miss, and sometimes it's just not worth you know reusing it for peace of mind when you're trying to get a project done. I know all about that. Jones is asking me, I have, I have a question. Does a 98 Trailblazer Polaris, does it have a fuel filter? Boy, you're testing my knowledge on older machines, aren't you all today? Jones, I can't give you an answer on that off the top of the head. But if you go to our website and do a search for your particular year, make, and model, it's going to give you an exploded view of the fuel system on one of the pages, probably the fuel tank. And if you don't see one there, well, there's your answer. So I would say let's refer to the Partzilla website and take a peek there and see if it can answer that question for us. Hey, and I did do a coolant change on the Grizzly 700. Whew. See, my brain is working a little bit today, Evan. Okay, David has asked me, I have a 1979 750 Special. Okay. It was sitting for several decades, and the speedometer is slow to respond. If I go the same speed, it will eventually catch up. Any suggestions? Okay, that, that's, of course, going to be a mechanical-type drive that I think, I believe, comes off of your, your front hub, memory serves. It's been a little while. It's kind of sad that I actually know that machine. I probably set one up in, uh, in my youth for the, uh, the showroom floor. I'm way old. But you're saying it's having to come up to uh, up to speed. But more than likely, it's fine down below. Um, but do check to make sure that the uh, what, it's not really a drive gear, but the drive cable is square. Make sure it's not broken. Sometimes they can be broken in the cable itself, and they'll kind of work because they're actually pushing against the the ends. I mean, I've seen that happen before. If it's still in one piece for the most part, then it's going to be a little bit of just age inside of the speedometer cluster itself. And you would really need to find a specialist that would be able to pull that apart, clean it, re-lube it, and then put it back together. I've never been able, been able to successfully pull that off, especially with these older eyes, but I know there are companies out there that specialize in rejuvenating old you know, speedometers, clus you know, any type of clusters you know, for the older machines. They're out there, just may have to do a, a search and find somebody that uh, can work on your particular make and model. 
All right, uh, Elvira was asking me, valves, it's blowing out the intake. Okay, valves were seated properly. All right, then definitely your timing's off in between your crankshaft and your, your valve train. If it's blowing it out the intake, that tells me that the intake is probably advanced too far, so it's still open when it should be going, or it's already open when it's trying to uh, go through the, uh, the, into the compression stroke. Did I do that backwards? Well, at any rate, your, uh, your timing's obviously off, so get out the manual, bring it around a top dead center, and then see where that mark is for the camshaft. I'm betting that it's going to be off. Um, also, I, I can't remember which make and model we were talking about, but sometimes the, uh, the stators will have more than one mark on them. Don't confuse the, the ignition timing mark with the mechanical timing mark. Sometimes they can be off, uh, they can be off by as much as 20 degrees, and that may be what you run into. You may have it set to the wrong timing mark down on the, uh, the crankshaft mark itself. All right, David's telling me front cushions for a 1992 Z50R need. Okay, are we talking about the uh, the brake pads for the front? All right, guys, if that's the case, why don't you look uh, look them up for um, David and see if you can get him pointed in the right direction with a link. Oh, what else do we have here? Rhinos asked me a 2008 Grizzly stator problem. Okay. Which Grizzly, by the way? I need a little bit more than that. Otherwise, I'll be shooting in the dark a little bit. Um, I guess it'll be a 500 or a 700. In the early models without a bypass pipe, any solutions besides all new stator cover with bypass oil pipe? I think I follow what you're talking about. Uh, I would say to update it, I mean, that would be the best way to go instead of trying to replace what they, they had on there, which evidently is causing you a problem. So go ahead and update it. Um, can't pronounce your name. When are you going to start shipping parts out of the U.S.? It's not really up. To, it is not up to us. It is up to the, uh, the government as to when they're going to release this and yours as well, depending on where you are. Um, if they're going to let us start shipping out. So, I mean, believe me, as soon as they do, we will let it rip. And but they're just not releasing us yet. All right, Gavin's asked me, do you know what the best rebuild kit is for a 400EX? Is best parts to use? Do, you, do I use aftermarket, or is it better to just go with OEM stuff again? Um, which part of the engine are you rebuilding? I would assume you're just going to freshen up the top end. I mean, I love the OEM stuff. I mean, the 400EX is probably one of my favorite machines. However, if you are wanting a little bit more out of it, I would suggest taking a look at the Wiseco line. I've always had fantastic luck with uh, their, uh, their product. Um, I use it on my personal machines, even one of my cars that I just finished building the engine for last night. Uh, that's what I'm going to be doing this weekend is reinstalling it. Um, you can bump up the uh, compression ratio just a little bit if you're trying to get a little bit more umph out of it. And uh, the, all of their uh, pistons, of course, they are forged and uh, they can put up with a lot of abuse. So if you're not going to go with the OEM, you may want to take a look at the, uh, at the Weissco line and see if they've got something for your, your EX to give it a little bit more zip if that's what you're after. Alfred, I came back. Where do I set the correct timing? Is there any forums online? I'm sure there are several forums online, but I wouldn't know which one to point you to, you know, right off the top of my head. The best, best thing to do is a little bit of uh, cart before the horse here is to always have a manual nearby um, when you're doing this. Uh, very few people can work on all these machines, or if anybody, without a manual nearby, because nobody can remember all the specs and the timing marks and the little nuances that are going to be inside of a good service manual. I mean, y'all watch me work on these, and I'll tell you a little secret. Within five feet, there is an OEM manual that I refer to if I can't remember on how to do something or what the settings or the torques are. I mean, if everybody thinks I keep all these numbers in my head. No, nobody, nobody can. There's too many. Come on. So, but go ahead and get you a manual. It's the way I do it. And I rec there's, 
you would you run the risk of damaging the machine if you don't follow the manual and and or somebody that's actually doing it step by step, which I, I'll tend to do you know, on camera. I just haven't rebuilt your particular make and model, so yeah, I'll get to it eventually, but it just hasn't happened yet. All right, looks like Partzilla answered David's question about the Z50 parts. And let's drop down to Bobby. He's got a 2008 CBR 600RR, cut down harness, professionally done. You must have a track machine. Crank sensor and camp sensor changed. No spark at coils. Any ideas? All right, I assume that you, uh, you cut down the harness because you're trying to drop weight and because you've got a track machine and that's what you're building. Just because somebody uh, professionally cut down the harness doesn't mean that they did it correctly. So chances are they may have clipped a wire or more importantly, a ground somewhere and it's causing it not to, uh, not to kick over. Um, there's so many sections of that harness that are brought together at a common grounding point. Um, I'm trying to remember where it is on the frame, but you'll see a spider web of wires coming down under one nut. I mean, if he accidentally cut any of those one wires, that could control two or three different aspects of the machine. So you're gonna have to break out the, uh, the wiring diagram for that one and get you a, uh, a voltmeter. And we were talking earlier about doing a voltage test versus resistance. Or the, here's where you're going to be doing a resistance check. You're going to have to go wire by wire for each circuit that's associated with whether or not that machine is going to send a spark or not. So you're going to be looking at your cam sensor wiring, your, your ignition wiring, I mean all of it. And you're going to have to go wire by wire to make sure that there's continuity because I'm betting that um, one of those was inadvertently cut. And that is why you're having no spark at the coils. So no easy fix on this except to just wade through your wiring harness wire by wire. All right, Gulam. okay. Uh, John, I have a brand new YFZ 2020, 450. When I, while, I, while I run the engine for warm up after a few minutes, its exhaust header glows red. Is this normal? Actually it is because I believe on that particular model, the exhaust pipe, if you will, is titanium. And those are extremely thin walled because they're trying to save weight. And when they get heated up, they glow red. It's okay. Um, even going back to my son's um, 2009 YFC, it does the same thing. Interesting when we do uh, night rides, uh, I can look back and make sure he's there. I'll hear him first, but then uh, I can see that red glow uh, from between the headlights down low. So no, don't be worried about that. It's designed to uh, glow a little bit red, but it's okay. Um, Ty is asking me, how hard is it to replace ball joints on a Honda Rancher? Well, it's really not tough at all. I'm pretty sure we've done a couple of those. I, I know we did a 350. We may or may not have done our 420 yet. I can't remember. Guys, if y'all would, refer back to our playlist for the TRX Rancher 350 and see if we can help out Ty with that one. It's not hard to do. Um, just want to make sure you get it um, lined back up if you have to pull the, uh, the steering, pull, steering joints out as well. Partzilla's answering questions about the, the West Coast stuff. All right, Bobby, I've already forgotten which machine you, you were, we were talking about, sorry. Uh, yes, sir, on Dirt Micro Sprint. Which one was Bobby talking about? Dad gummit. <laughs> uh, the 600 the cut down harness. Oh, okay, yep. Yeah, if, uh, once again, you're just gonna have to start picking through it. Uh, I understand your pain. I've got a uh, M3 harness that has been cut down and I've had to go in and find a couple of errors. Not that I make mistakes. I never make mistakes. Thought I did once, but I was mistaken. <laughs> How fast, okay, Backyard is asking me, 
how fast two values move per minute at idle on a Raptor 700. Um, it's idle on a Raptor 700 is actually fairly high. I want to take, think it's around 700, but um, I'd, I'd have to go back to the manual to find out. Guys, could y'all take a peek and see if we can get that answered for him? I, I think it's in that neighborhood though. All right, I got uh, Jimmy from Israel. And uh, love my videos. Thank you. You're welcome. I uh, hope to see video repairs on the CB500X. You know, that's one I, I'd like to work on as well. That's a bit of a retro model, if I remember correctly. So um, I think I may have to find one. We haven't worked on a street bike in a while. Right? So we'll go in and bring one in. What do y'all think about it, guys? You know, yeah, you don't care. You just aim the camera at me, don't you? All right, Geraldo is uh, chiming in. John, giveaway requester here again. Okay, did you come up with what um, one that you want us to do? Okay, how about a search for a mint Honda TRX 250R, rebuild it and give it away? Oh, a retro rebuild. I could get into that. Come on, guys. <laughs> well, let's, let's consider doing an old machine, um, providing we can... Uh, Get the appropriate hop-up parts for it. Draw it up? Yeah, we'll take a peek. Why not? All right. David uh, responded back to Partzilla, replying to Partzilla. You only have the left cushion assembly and not the right. You need both. All right. Guys, if you would find out the question or the answer from Mr. David. And uh, he says he needs both. Let's find the man both of them, whatever they are. Good grief, was that 30 minutes already? <laughs> well guys, I guess that's gonna do it. And I gotta go home and put that back in a little silver car. So my weekend's just getting going. Well listen guys and girls, we really appreciate y'all coming out and spending a little bit of time with us, throwing me some questions. I enjoy doing this, and, uh, and we just want to say thank you for coming out and especially shopping with us over at Partzilla.com because it makes all of this makes all of this possible. So everybody have a great weekend, a great week, and God willing, we will see you again this coming Friday at three o'clock. Y'all be safe out there, and God bless. <laughs>